Good evening. Welcome to a special edition of To The Point. This evening we'll be uh, looking at the American uh, elections who will be elected in office. Uh, with us this evening to uh, discuss this issue is Dr. Khaled uh, Refaat Mohamed Saleh, who is the director of the TIBA Center for Political and Strategic Studies. A pleasure to have you, nice uh, meet you. Uh, with us. Um, before we go into uh, any details, uh, worth noting in this election, because there are lots of... Um, uh, things that are distinct yes and one thing that is constantly being mentioned for example in the american media is the fact that this is the first presidential election with two candidates over 70. yes <laughs> uh, actually if uh, joe biden wins he gotta be the eldest mm. uh, president in uh, american history over the american he gotta yes. be 77 something so mm. uh, there is so many different things in this election if you look at from the beginning as uh, the master scene of the beginning is the, yes. epidemic, the coronavirus mm -hmm. and how Mr. President Trump handled mm -hmm. the epidemic. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, uh, if this election was one year ago, I guarantee that President Trump gonna win. But for the time being, at this time, nobody knows, you know. Even everybody, if you ask anyone about the elections, who are going to win, he can say, I don't know. Except of the two guys of the campaign, mm -hmm. they're going to assure their president going to win. But uh, so many different things, as you said, in this uh, election, mm -hmm. we see uh, the, a huge number of uh, Hispanics going to vote this time, mm -hmm. a huge number of African Americans going to vote this time, and uh, Arabs too going to vote this time. Uh, you can look at uh, it's a minorities elections. So um, a lot of minorities. A lot, uh, a lot. The fact that this is uh, one of the other things that make it quite historic is that this is the first time that in uh, pre-elections yep. you have over a hundred million that have actually already went and participated in the process and cast their ballots. Right, right you're right. You is have this the fact that minorities, as you are mentioning, is uh, is um, are more more minorities are participating. Yeah. Is that why the number is yes, high? Yes, for two reasons actually. First is uh, minorities go to the election because of all the eruptions, of, or, yes. you know. And the other thing is because of the uh, Corona, uh, COVID-19. Yeah. Many people don't want to go to the polls. Many people to go to mix with others in this uh, certain sense. So, uh, for just two hours ago, I read that uh, we have 99.9 .9 million people right now for voting and 62 voted by mail yeah. and the other went by themselves to the polls. Mm. So we have a huge number of people participating this time. If you compare this number by the number to 2016, you have only 70% of voters right now. Yes. And we expect this time we have uh, a rank or a huge number yes. of uh, voters and uh, not less than 150. Mm -hmm. expect that not less than 150 million mm -hmm. gonna vote this time uh, yes. who knows who when i don't know mm -hmm. um we are going to go to washington right now we have mm -hmm. uh, with us uh, dr mac shark Ewi, who is the writer and professor of international relations from washington dc dr shark um can you Tell us, uh, Dr. Sharawi, how are things at your end? Uh, it's quite a historical election this time with over 100 million that have participated in pre-election phase. Um, how are you expecting a large turnout, a historic turnout uh, in this uh, phase of elections or what? Uh, thank you very much for having me and my regards to you, uh, guests and your audience in Egypt and all over the world. I believe uh, this election is a special election with the 2020, and uh, most of the people was registered to vote in the United States, and they did not use their right, the constitutional right to vote. Uh, they are keen this time to go down and uh, cast in the vote. I believe that uh, according to the early voting uh, uh, data and uh, mailing uh, uh, ballots, uh, they showed that a lot of people were being registered into the database and they did not uh, uh, elect uh, in 2006. They are involved in this process. And I believe uh, now we're up to 100 million people already being cast in votes, uh, early votes and uh, uh, voting by mail and also uh, people uh, attending today up to, I believe, now almost uh, 6,000. 
uh, in voting process in the United States. And we are looking for maybe 150,000, I'm sorry, 150 million uh, Americans will vote this election. And that, I believe, is going to be a record. Uh, 2016, I believe it was 57% uh, from people uh, registered in the age of election in the United States. Uh, this time, it's different, and people are keen into casting their votes and uh, choosing their own uh, candidates to rule in the, rule in the United States for the next four years. Um, do you expect um, this time as well, because in 2016 it was uh, quite uh, significant that uh, the White House and the Senate were both from the same party. Will we see a repetition of that? Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Uh, we have technical problems. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, do you think the Senate... Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Dr. Mack, go ahead. I can hear you. Dr. Mack, can you hear me? We unfortunately lost our connection with Dr. Mack. We'll try to uh, get another uh, connection uh, with him. Um, I was asking Dr. Yeah. Mack about the Senate and the White House. I expect the Senate to be for the Democrats, uh, for so sure. On, so, yeah, so unlike time, last time. Like, like last time, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, the president, I mean... Uh, it was, was quite close. It's 53-47, but... Uh, no, um, yeah, but for the, the Senate... You expect Everybody them to be expe yeah, it's expected they're going to be from the Democrats too. W why this time from the Democrats? Why, why, why? Be because people in America are looking for the issues that is very, very close to Democrats. They are looking for the taxes, for the abortion, looking for the uh, Medicaid, medication, all these mm -hmm. uh, things are very related to Demo Democrats. If you look to the Republicans, the Republicans look for the other issue, like yes. tax relief, looking for arms, looking for fighting with China. Looking, all these issues doesn't concern the American, the average American people, the John one, doesn't mm -hmm. care about this. Mm -hmm. So people, when they go to the polls, they're looking for their interest. The, all they care is economy. Mm -hmm. If ca economy comes first, everybody, everything after that doesn't care. So we expect that Senate can be from Democrats, but for the president, nobody knows because uh, it is not direct elections. It's representatives. Mm -hmm. If it's direct election, uh, we know that Democrats are going to do it again. Like last time, if you remember last time in 2016, Hillary Clinton over uh, President Trump with three million people, three million yes. votes. Yes. Yeah, but it, when we come to representatives, mm -hmm. it's quite different. Mm -hmm. And this time, this is, that's why this time nobody expects, anything, nobody says anything because no, nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, um, basically what you're saying is that electoral polls are not necessarily reflective of yeah. the outcome, as was in the yeah, Clinton, that happened last time. In, in, with Clinton, for yep. example, that mm -hmm. uh, the polls were more in her favor and the end result was quite different. Yeah. Um, because of Florida too. And everybody expects Florida going to do it this time. Last time was because of Florida, North Carolina and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows this time Florida where it goes. Florida has Even 47. Florida has quite a large uh, Hispanic population. Yes. And it also has a quite large uh, elderly population. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. We managed to uh, get in contact again with okay. uh, Dr. Mack. Dr. Mack, can you hear us this time? I hope. Dr. Uh, I hear you well now. No yes. Um, let me know where I cut off because I was talking to Mack. Oh, okay, no problem. Dr. Mack, we were uh, discussing the issue of the Senate. Do you think the summit will, Senate will go red or uh, blue? And um, uh, key states uh, like Florida, for example, we're just discussing that. The fact that it has mostly a minority population and elderly as well, will they be more in favor of Trump or Biden? I believe the Senate have a special case. Uh, the senator in the United States served for six years, and every two years they make in renewal for one third of the Senate. This year is 35 seats. I believe it's 23 uh, uh, from uh, uh, Republicans and 
uh, uh, 12 to 1 democracy. Uh, most likely, if the uh, supporters for uh, Mr. President Donald Trump is keen to go down to this day, today, the election day, yes. uh, I believe that it's going to be a punishment uh, election. They're going to punish the Democrats, what they did to Donald Trump, uh, starting from his beginning of his first period from January 20, 2017. And the uh, Democrats put rocks on the roads for Mr. Trump. They do everything in their power to not let him do what he's supposed to do. And this is very obvious. And that makes uh, one half of the United States population the Republican Party and the Republican, uh, uh, yeah, you know, people in the United States are really enraged, and they are not, you know, going to forget the Republican what they did to stealing uh, Mr. Trump's first uh, uh, presidential uh, period. And I believe if they go today, uh, the Republican, it's not going to be just for the White House. So who's who going to be into? The mm -hmm. Oval Office is going to be uh, the, the three smash heads. It's mm -hmm. going to be the White House and the, 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 the uh, House of Representatives and also the Senate. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion, and I believe most of uh, you know my uh, my yeah. colleagues are agree with that. It, yeah. It's, it's yes. one or nothing. Yes. It's all or nothing themselves. If we look at the international relations file, South Korea, for example, made it very, very clear that it will definitely vote uh, Biden uh, should uh, it be uh, allowed to participate. What about Russia, for example? Russian, Russian position has been quite um, balanced. It has not revealed the skin. Where do you think Russia uh, would uh, vote? Would it go Biden or Trump, in your opinion? My opinion, uh, they are very conservative in this election. they supporting Trump, but at the same time, they're not going to lose the relationship with who's going to be uh, uh, the president of the United States. But yes. to be honest with you, uh, what, what Obama in eight years did with, with the Russian, it was not that great relationship between the United States and Russia. And also, uh, uh, who is punishing Russia for what, what, what Russia did into the Ukraine problem and, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking the Crimea uh, Asian problem in, in, in 2014 and uh, uh, sanctions from the uh, UE and sanctions from the United States. Also, when they uh, are poisoning the double agent, uh, so Jay, I believe so, uh, uh, United States taking a very tough uh, situation against Russia, and I believe they kick, I believe, 56 diplomats from, uh, from the United States, and also uh, uh, this, uh, a lot of uh, uh, precautions from the United States. When the United States having a cast, uh, uh, you know, uh, act in the United States, that's in 2017, July 2017, and this is cast, uh, it is uh, how to protect the United States from their own on enemy. Yes. And the three enemies in the United States is Iran, and uh, North Korea and Russia. Mm -hmm. so I believe that that's you know the in, in Article two two three one that uh, 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 imposing sanctions of any countries uh, dealing with this country, especially for armed deals. And this is uh, the main issue for uh, the resolution now studied into uh, the, the U.S. Uh, Congress for uh, uh, imposing sanctions in Turkey for having a deal, uh, an army deal with uh, uh, S-400 from, from Russia. Mm -hmm. I believe the uh, United States strategy for the, for the next 10 years is considering uh, Russia as one of the enemy of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Russia has a big role uh, to help uh, you know, uh, Trump uh, you know, uh, for, for 2016 mm -hmm. uh, election, but in this year, I believe they are a little bit conservative. They are helping, but they're taking, you know, holding the stick from the middle. Yes. They don't want to have uh, an issue with who's going to be the president for the United States. But mm -hmm. China is a different story. Yes. Uh, Dr. Mack Sharawi, uh, pro writer and professor of international relations from Washington, D.C. Pleasure to have you with us on To The Point. Um, uh, Dr. Khalid, Iran.
Is it, is it praying now for Trump or Biden? Biden, for sure. <laughs> they are crossing their fingers for Biden right now because <laughs> Trump, he said that he's going to go for stiffer procedures against Iran. Yes. And we, we see the, uh, the, the what, what you can say is the tensions in the Gulf area between em Arab Emirates and Iran. And now America goes far with Arab Emirates, giving F-35. Yes. And America uh, said one word that we will never allow Iran to attack their neighbors. So we see that Trump put all his power behind the enemies of Iran, if you call them, like Saudi Arabia, from em Arab Emirates or whatever. So em Iran now is crossing their fingers waiting for Biden. Yeah. Oh, the same thing for China too. China has yes. a big problem with yeah. Trump. President, yeah. Trump. President Trump said one word that we will never allow China to go. If he's back in office, are you expecting things to escalate? Yes. This trade war between, because it's not just a trade war. I mean, you have a trade it's a and war. a COVID-19. It's a trade war. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. it really is a, a, yes. a big war. Yeah. Will it um, um, continue more aggressively or will things mellow down once he's no, reelected? No, no, there's no slowdown. It's going to ignite, it's going to escalate us up and going to mm -hmm. go far and far. I think President Trump, if he goes back to the office, he's going to far behind that because he, he said that we're not allowing American dollar to go to China. We never allow American factories to go to China, American jobs to go to China. That's what he said. And he was very obvious. And I think President Trump, say whatever you like about him. This guy, when he says something, he do it. Yes. And we know that very yes. sure. So uh, I think that China, there's North Korea and Iran, most of these three countries are waiting for America or for, for Biden to come because to ease the relationship between America and these countries. Uh, we say other things too in the Middle East, in the Middle East we have another problem. We mm -hmm. have another, are waiting for Trump because Joe Biden has a very different agenda, yes. different from us, waiting for Trump. And uh, as we see that President Trump said that I will never allow an American soldier outside of the country. We're not going to fight for others. Yes. So we see a lot of hot area cooling down. Mm. But if Biden comes, I think it's a different story. Yes. We're going to go back to Obama time. We're going to see a lot of invasions, a lot of uh, strikes or there and here and whatever, as you remember that. Yes, yes, yes. So it's a different story. Mm -hmm. But both of them, uh, all I care about is American electorate. American doesn't care about all this. Mm -hmm. Americans care only about economy. And both of them has a about different... About internal like, affairs. Yes, that's internal all they affairs. care about. The American elections are quite complex, how the process is done and how the, the numbers work out. Um, a brief report clarifying some of those issues and then we'll continue our discussion moving on to international relations. Who wants Biden versus who wants Trump right after this? The election system in the United States of America is a unique system. Contrary to what many believe that American voters elect their president directly, the word decisive refers to the Electoral College, which consists of 538 delegates. When the American voter goes to the polls to choose a new president for the United States of America, in practice, he does not choose his president directly, but rather gives his vote to one of the delegates in the state in which he is voting because the American presidential election system depends on the so-called electoral college. In order to enter the White House, the two U.S. presidential candidates need at least 270 votes, that is, the half plus one, out of the total number of 538 members of the Electoral College, which is equivalent to the number of members of the U.S. House of Representatives and Senate. And each U.S. state has a certain number of votes within this complex according to its population and the number of representatives who represent it in the U.S. Congress. It should be noted here that California, the most populous U.S. state, has 55 votes in the compound, while Florida has 27 votes, 
while North Dakota has only three votes. Welcome back. Israel, um, here is the dilemma. Biden was the vice president in Obama's administration that was very much in support of Israel. Trump, suffice it to say, he just a few days ago, probably yesterday or something, he said, we have friends in Israel, in the region, and he was talking to Israel. Who will Israel want in office, Biden or Trump, in your opinion? You know, I know it's quite complex. Uh, yes, it's quite complex. Here. Tell you the truth, Israel is going to take advantage of both of them. Mm. Uh, if Trump continues, Israel is going to go in the way of normalizing its relationship with Arabs. Yes. Now we have uh, Arab Emirates, we have Bahrain, we have Jordan, we have Egypt, and Sudan is uh, almost about yes. there. So they're talking about Morocco, they're talking about Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, is, beginning of the year, I believe. Yeah, Saudi start. Arabia. And they're talking about some other countries. Nobody knows, maybe Oman or whatever it is. Mm. So these are the advantages Israel is going to take from Trump. Mm. But what about if Joe Biden comes? If Joe Biden comes, yes. he take another advantage. Because when he went to the uh, IPAC conference, mm. he gave some promises. He gave mm. two promises. Mm. First promise, he said that he's going to maintain and keep the safety of Israel and to be the strongest country in the region all over all its enemies all together yes. Yes. this is the first promise he said and the second promise he said that they gotta increase all the um, um, how to say the military uh, donations to Israel he gonna say that and he promised for two this two promises mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter if Trump continues or if Joe Biden comes Israel gonna take advantage of any of them so it doesn't matter you know mm -hmm. so, um, as you mentioned earlier a lot of the minorities are voting. Yes. When Trump came into office, he was not, he did not have a lot of um, um, rapport, if we can put it that way, with yeah. the minorities yeah. and with the females as well, worth noting. Um, do you think over his term in office, has that changed? No, <laughs> it went worse. It went worse. It went worse. It went worse. But because, you know what? Because he, once he came, he said that he's going to build all the wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So every Hispanic in in U.S. U.S. states going to have a problem with him. Yes. Uh, now he goes to for stiffer and tougher regulations for the immigration process. This mm -hmm. has a problem with Hispanics. But, and you have a problem with African-Americans too. He said they're going to give more money for the police departments and he, he, against riots and all this thing. And you should uh, put the natural guards on the cities and all this thing. So have another problem with African-Americans. We have another problem with Arabs and uh, or Muslims yes. because he forbade four countries, citizens, to come in America. Yes. So there's a problem. has a, a problem with gays too has a problem with abortions, mm. supporters like mm. women. Mm. So he has a problem with every minority in the States. So the main supporters of Trump are the white elders. This, the, they, they support him. Mm. And we have another issue here. If but what uh, Okay, go on. White elderly, they were in support of him. Will they still be in support after COVID-19? Uh, some because of them, th this is the issue. I mean, this is a pandemic that really tested the will of a lot of What he did for the elders, he gave them a stimulus check, as you remember. Yes. He gave $300 every, every week for yes. these people. So he released the attention, the, the attention okay. released the effect of the pandemic. Yes. But what I, I want to say something very, very strange this time. That Joe Biden is Catholic. And uh, yeah, he's Catholic. He's, uh, if he wins, he's going to be the second Catholic president in the history of the United okay. States after JFK. Yes. It's six in 1961. Mm -hmm. So now we have 60 years without one Catholic president. Yes. So uh, uh, as a Catholic has some morals for his, uh, he's against abortion, he's against gays. But uh, does that go with today's trend? Just the, what I want to say. Like the new generation. Yeah, well, this is an old-fashioned. That's what I say is that elderly people yes. cares about this. Yes, so, but so the new generation... The new generation doesn't care about this. It's, 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 it's freedom. conservative. Yes, to, he's conservative. Yeah. He's, he's conservative. But that's what... Yesterday, or the day before yesterday, he went out and he said he has no problem with abortions. And everybody doesn't believe him. Because yes. it's against his beliefs. Yes. 
Yes. So it's against the, his religious beliefs. Yeah. Um, America is quite divided. T today in the morning, I went to the church first and went to the grave of the, the son. son. Uh, yeah. America is divided. Yes, it is. Which president, in your opinion, if any of them, can, is there hope to reunite the American rank and file? Because now you have minorities on one side, the conservatives on one side, the liberals on the other side. I mean, really the gap between them is, is very evident now yes. that it was in the past. Yes, if Joe Biden wins, the gap is going to narrow. But if Trump wins, the, gonna, the, Trump, the gap is going to go up wide and wide and wider. Mm -hmm. Because the character of, of Trump itself, Trump doesn't uh, tolerate it. He just say, I'm going to do this. No, no matter what happens, whatever but, but it happens. You don't think his position, sometimes your, your platform, phase yes. one, yes. term one, yep. is different from your platform term, term two. Now, this should he be re-elected, and this is term two and the final term, I because think there is no I think this rule, this rule doesn't go for Trump, because okay. this, this guy is very stubborn, you know, he mm -hmm. doesn't care about anything. This, this is a big problem with Trump, mm -hmm. and this is a problem with Trump in the all the international relationship, as you, as you notice, yeah. it doesn't change his opinion. It doesn't, no matter what happened, no matter if the case is changed, it doesn't change his opinion. But I think if uh, President Joe Biden or elected President Joe Biden comes, so it's going to be a different story, very different story. Because very, from day one, he's going to go and to gather all Americans back again, because his uh, slogan is America come back again. It's, it's mm -hmm. a slogan for him. Or he cares. Another day for America. Another day, another start for America. And he ha gave very good promises. Like first uh, uh, thing he said, he's going to uh, tax deductible for every American. He yes. said he's going to end all the pandemic in one year. I don't know how. That's what he said. And he promised that 2021 is going to be a year of flourish of America. That's mm -hmm. what he said. Uh, many people hear that. And there is... Uh, a new feminine I, I expected this time that the new generations are going to the polls for yes. the first time. M mostly that we have the average voters mm. uh, uh, age is sub between 30 and 35. This year we come to 20 to 26. Mm. So that, that means that a new generation, generation are out for the police, especially, especially Hispanics and Blacks. Yes. Uh, with us on the line is His Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Your Excellency, can you hear us? Yes, how are you? How are you, sir? Um, whenever we look at American elections, we are always um, drawing scenarios vis-a-vis -vis how will the president sitting in the Oval Office deal with regional issues. And here I'm talking about issues pertaining to our part of the world. Be it Biden or Trump, will this differ? Or is this an administration's uh, um, position, so to speak? We have here two scenarios to follow. Yes. The first is that usually the American people always give the president another period to, to rule. Yes. Uh, very rare situ uh, occasions when they fail the president. This is scenario number one. Scenario number two, that according to the estimation, it seems that Biden is gaining uh, at the beginning. So we don't know. But let us talk about e Egypt and our region. Yes. Uh, I am quite sure that uh, the United States is, after all, uh, a country with organizations, political organizations. Here I talk about uh, the presidency, about the Congress, then the Foreign Office and the Pentagon. Yes. The Foreign Office and the Pentagon related to the old bureaucracy in the good sense of the, of, uh, the word. Mm -hmm. They understand quite well that Egypt and the region is very important for the American national security. Mm -hmm. Since uh, Eisenhower and the Malab al Nasser, although by that time we are not in the best situation concerning the relations, but even so, uh, President Eisenhower made a point to uh, see the Malab al Nasser when our president uh, went to the United Nations, and he, he said some very uh, good words about him. Mm -hmm. Since then, the state stopped to uh, cooperate with Egypt with food uh, security uh, programs. I remember the PL 480 where we were getting uh, cereals and uh, wheat 
uh, and we, we paid in Egyptian pounds for Egyptian uh, development programs. Yeah. Then we have a time like when President Reagan was ruling, and he made some slip of a tongue against our President Mubarak in some time, but even so he continued to consider Egypt very important for the American yes. national security. Then lately we have Hillary Clinton, who visited Egypt when she was uh, foreign minister, and she said the same. In order to stop any uh, movement from the Congress to stop uh, the American assistance to Egypt. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I think that we are in a, in a good position because uh, uh, normally we, we, we are cooperating in uh, bringing peace to our area, especially since the peace initiative of President Elizabeth. And since then, the Americans continue to help Egypt Yes. with uh, 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 development assistance and with military assistance also. Mm -hmm. But I must say that for every dollar they help us, we are buying by more than $60 for our uh, imports. Yes. So it is a balanced situation where Egypt is very important for uh, the national security of the United States and its policy in our area. Same time, uh, 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 any Egyptian a wise man would think that uh, the, Amer the, the United States is very important for our uh, foreign relations. And thank God that now we have good relations with all the countries, members in the United Nations, that Cairo is hosting the, the, uh, many, as many uh, embassies yes. and uh, missions, much more than any capital in the world. Yes. So, whether, uh, if you ask me, maybe it would be easier for us if President Trump continue, because mm -hmm. uh, he knows the situation, his relation with our president is excellent, he pays him several times, he is uh, uh, satisfied with uh, the cooperation between Egypt and the U.S. Yes. Uh, Ambassador, came, Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi... Uh, we, we, we shall wait and see, because yes. I don't think... It wouldn't take a long time until he will realize the importance of Egypt yes. for his international policy. Definitely. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you very much for joining us on To The Point. Uh, what the Americans uh, want in the following report, and then we'll be right back. with service cross and that's of course you know it's the second highest medal of honor uh, it's like somebody punches you in the stomach and you can't get your breath for hours presidential would be biden and my reason in be to get some sort of normalism back to the country let's stop fighting if I could show you pictures of seven years ago, when Linda and I came home, how patriotic and how honored we were by the, our neighbors that look double at you now. When we go to the supermarket, they look. I don't understand it. This is America. This is what my grandfather, my parents fought for. I'll be very happy when the elections are over, and I hope for this country's sake and for my grandchildren's sake that we get back to some peace and harmony and get back to normal, to respecting one another. Donald J. Trump, our worst enemy right now, it's those who want to inject socialism and change everything that made this country great. And he's the man that stepped up, gave up his livelihood, his income to fix it. Everybody always talks about Staten Island. We are that little town in West Virginia where the working man lives. And these people have been neglected. He doesn't neglect them. He acknowledges their service. We just want to live and feed our kids, pay our mortgage, make sure my community's safe. It's that simple. 
I'm voting for Donald Trump. I feel a little bit safer with him because I feel like people are not going to want to mess with him because they're not going to want to find out, is he really going to come after us? I believe that he will, too. When I wake up November 4th and if Donald Trump is not president, I still have bills to pay and dinner to cook and a house to clean and people to love. The world is not going to end either way. I'm voting for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They are not perfect. They are our best option. I'm fearful of what another four years of the Trump administration will look to American people, especially marginalized communities. The fear is real and it's valid because you can lose your job if you fall upon the opposite side of the political spectrum of someone who can hire you. It's saddening to see people dislike each other just because they have a difference of opinion. Welcome back. The United States, the people are quite tense after certain statements by Trump yes. because he said that should he not win the elections, then he would be contesting the results and that there will, that means that some ballots have been rigged. Yep. He was specifically talking about the pre-election ballots yep. that someone must have played or manipulated the results if he does not win the elections. And he said today another thing too. He said that everything should be done by the end of the day today. And he's not allowed to go for four or five days more than that. Mm -hmm. And this is impossible because in the American uh, uh, history, if you go to a poll out, if you go to pre-elections, you need to open all the 100 million votes in one day. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's yes. impossible. And there is another thing that the state's law different in America. Some states has the rule that you can open it by the beginning of the day, but other states like Arizona said, no, you should by the end of the day. So you, you should start by 9 o'clock tonight or 10 o'clock and you take one day. So it'll never be before Thursday. Mm -hmm. it'll never be. Mm -hmm. So everybody expect a problem. I need to add something. Because, uh, Ambassador Kamal Yumi said that there's a rule that no American president ever lost uh, the election, the second election. The re-election, unless he has some kind of a problem. No, I want, I want to ask something. I agree with him. No American president ever lost the elections during a war. Never. So people now consider the COVID-19 as a war. As a war, So yes. ex they expect he's going gonna to win. Mm -hmm. From the American history, 200 years ago, no one ever lost election during a war. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with us on the phone is His Excellency Minister Mohammad Arabi, former Minister of Foreign Affairs. Your Excellency, can you hear us? Hi, how are you, Madam Dina? How are you? Of course, you miss the, the, the scene, being, having lived in the States quite some time. <laughs> well, uh, I think it is still uh, premature, you know, to judge uh, the results. Uh, yes. I think we have to wait. Uh, and uh, this is, you know, a unique... Uh, uh, process in the American election. I yes. think uh, we didn't witness anything like this before mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the uh, number of the voters, in yes. terms of the money uh, which was, you know, collected for the two candidates, uh, in terms also of the, uh, you know, the uh, attention of the whole countries all over the world. Yes. Uh, I think this will prove that the era of the United States still exists and still, yeah. you know, uh, intact. Generally speaking, whose foreign policy tips the scale? Um, well, I cannot, you know, uh, uh, just predict uh, what kind of changes we will face uh, in the foreign policy of the United States, because, you know, there is a lot of uh, hands actually uh, formulating the foreign policy of this country, not just the president, but also Another, you know, uh, let us say, organs uh, like the Senate, the Congress, the mm -hmm. National Security uh, Advisor, the Pentagon, the CIA, all, all of this. So, but anyway, there is some strategic uh, aspects. I, uh, I think uh, it will not change, but uh, maybe uh, the foreign policy uh, towards, uh, let us say, China and Russia and, the, the, and Europe, it will change according to the next president. If Biden will be on the White House, yes. I think uh, this will uh, 
uh, enhance the relationship with the European countries, and it might uh, also enhance the relation with uh, China and maybe a little bit uh, Russia. Uh, I think the Middle East maybe also will uh, have a lot of drastic changes, you know, towards the, some countries here in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, Iran, of course, will be happy with uh, if Biden will be in the White House. Yes. Uh, so there is a lot of actual changes, but anyway, the strategic aspects of the foreign policy of the United States, you know, I think it is always, uh, let us say, uh, uh, strong enough not to be uh, subject to uh, uh, the opinion of the president himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, Minister Mohammed Arabi, thank you very much for joining us and we hope we'll have you in studio soon. Um, we have a couple of minutes to wrap up, but we cannot ignore an, an issue which Trump kept hammering in his campaign uh, trail on, which is a reference to the oil. Yep. He kept saying, we have a lot of oil now, we do not need anyone's oil, and we do not have to go and fight, or p not fight, but actually say, he referred as protect. Uh, them for oil because we have enough oil. He said from day one that uh, blood expensive more than oil. So do we do need to exceed and put blood to get oil. Mm. And what I'm saying now and what we, I see everybody says now is that oil is going down. Mm. Oil prices are going down. Mm. If oil go, go, uh, prices goes below $60 for mm. a barrel, mm. I think America is going to go back to import oil from the Gulf mm. or from Denmark. Yes. But, but for the time being, he said that we have enough oil, we don't need to import oil. But if oil goes below $60 a barrel, he got to go. Because the expenses, uh, American oil is very, very expensive because they are digging way deeper in the ground. It's not like oil in the Gulf, it's very cheap. It costs them less than $10 a barrel. So if they expect, expect it for 20 or 30, it's a big money. But for Americans, if they import it for 20 or, or 30 or 40 or even 50, they're going to save money because it costs them to export it for $60, mm. apparently. Um, again, does it make a difference who is elected in this region or is it an institution's uh, country whereby the policies will be uh, coming from a mixed institution rather than individual. I agree with Ambassador Muhammad Arabi that it's a constitution. The decision in America is not a present decision. It's yes. a Pentagon, it's NSA, it's a Senate too, and it's a think tanks. Don't yes. never forget the think tanks. Yes. Because the think tanks gives all the proposals as a strategic. America doesn't go day for day by day. America goes for long-term plans, like 50, 60 years. Yeah. Right now, we are going for the plans that put by Hank Singer in the 70s. Yes. So it does a big change. But if you give him the freedom to move in the tactic uh, issues, like uh, some uh, uh, commercial tensions, China, no big deal. Yes. But if you talk about fight, of the war, of the cut relations, no, you are not allowed to do that. Uh, the decision like this is made by constitutions. Mm -hmm. So I expect no big difference in strategic decision, but small freedom or allowance in the tactic uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. Dr. Khaled Rifa, thank you very much for joining us on Your The Point. Really pleasure to have you uh, with us. Thank you for your uh, fruitful input. I'd like to thank you, the viewers, and we'll see you same time next week. Until then, good night.